Hello, this is an assessment of a Hagspiel Grand Piano. Not quite sure when it was made, sometime between 1865 and 1875. If you're familiar with Hagspiel, you might be able to help me. I think that's about the range. Um, it's got a full iron frame, so that probably may, means it's after 1870. Just looking at the casework, uh, you can see it's, it's a worn-up piano and beautifully designed. Typical uh, lyre-shaped pedals of that time. So they would go right up to certainly 1875, 1880, I think. And and the, it's been faded quite a lot, as you can see. So just have a look round. If this was repolished, then it's a stunning-looking veneer. So that could be done. It looks reasonable. It's a faded worn-up. If we polish it, it'll be a little bit darker, I think, but still would go for lightish colour to try and get the most contrast in the grain. That's the top of the piano. Um, it's got a bit damaged. I think it would be difficult to... Well, it could disguise the damage if we if we French polished it. French polishing takes about 70 hours, by the way, and, uh, so it's, it's costly. But the instrument's exceptionally well designed. So just want to show you the case first. And, and one major problem that we've got and that is there's a lot of woodworm so we just have a look now and identify where the woodworm is this by the way pulls forward as we've mentioned before to put candlesticks on in the days when before there was electricity obviously you had to put candlesticks somewhere um the other woodworm we can identify here you can see some holes in the side there inside the piano it's very obvious too along the front rail there um and the legs i, I believe too so I just had to try to identify most of it. The other side there, here on the fall, and the side of the piano. Um, extensive damage on the pedals too, I think there is. Let's have a look at the legs. The pedals particularly, we saw a lot. There we are. A bit concerned moving, uh, just moving it around that it's crumbling. We did see inside the piano, you can see it's crumbling slightly too. So um, what we would do is treat it, obviously. I don't think there's any live woodworm, but treat it just in case um, and then inject glue inside of, to strengthen it. If you are familiar with treating wood, woodworm and uh, strengthening it afterwards, please let us know. I think I think it's, it's well, that leg's not fallen to bits, which is helpful. So, uh, so obviously we can rescue it and certainly worth rescuing. Now looking underneath the piano, the soundboard seems to be in good condition. In fact, can't really see any soundboard splits. I think it's the original soundboard, though it may have been refinished at some stage. The strings seem to be original. That's a back leg, plenty of woodworm there as well, as you can see just above it, and in the leg itself. So a lot of work to do, treating woodworm, uh, building up the wood a bit where it's crumbled as well. Uh, but underneath it looks reasonable. Well, there's lots of woodworm apart from that. I'm trying to be positive because I like the piano. Now, I've tested the tuning pins, as we said many times before. It's one of the most important checks. And they are a bit loose, unfortunately. And we'll listen to the tuning in a minute. Um, and I think they're originals because they're very wobbly on my standard size tuning lever. And the bass are wobbly, although the bass strings, I don't know if they've been replaced or not. Um, I'm not an expert in very old pianos. We have restored um, similar age pianos before, but we're doing mostly younger pianos, Bluton, as we do a lot of from about 1875 onwards. Uh, we'll restore any really good piano. You can see there's a bit of moth as well, unfortunately, as well as woodworm. So that uh, if we restrung the piano, obviously we'd replace all of that felt. And so there's a lot of work to do. And uh, there's a scutcheon here, a scutcheon here, which uh, fell out. I'll put that in in case it gets lost. I think we'll put that back in place. Um, looking at the strings, there are a couple broken here. Uh, it's well, very much below pitch. Another telltale sign that's got broken loose, uh, sorry, loose tuning pins is because somebody's put some felt in here, wedging the strings that uh, won't stay in tune because the pins are too loose. And so, uh, Definitely needs restringing. Very rusty strings too. We would always pitch raise if the uh, if the string pins pins were tight and the strings weren't so rusty. Uh, if we could to try and preserve the original strings. If you listen to the bass here, it's very rich. If we look at the tuning, this is a supposed to be a four forty, and you can see it's about four one nine. And the octave below 
is a little bit sharper than that one, not much. And the bass, the bass end is a lot sharper. So I did think it's been standing around a very long time without being chewed. That's an octave in the bass, which is pleasant. And fruity bass is an ex excellent tone on the piano. Perhaps slightly thin here compared to a modern piano, but, but not very much so. And very out of tune, but the underlying tone sounds excellent. So that's encouraging. It is a full iron frame. Um, just on an assessment of the Bluton is slightly younger than this, I think, although the frame is extremely similar to looking. I think the Bluton is about 1875, so judging on the frame and similar looking. Um, by the way, this is made in Dresden, and caps were made in Dresden too, and made quite a few grand pianos that are very attractive too. Um, Hagspiel, as I say, there's a few very similarly designed Hagspiels in the UK. Um, if you're familiar with Hagspiel, please do teach us what we can uh, what you can about it because we want to learn as much as possible especially if we end up being commissioned to restore it the bridge seems in pretty good condition and the strings i think they're original strings i can't imagine a string maker making this style of strings so let's say they are original so that's 1870 let's put it at that for the moment just for giving it a specific date there's a hammer up up there as you can see you're going to have to push, make sure they're all down before we take the action out Looking at the action, it's very similar construction to very old Beckstein's. It's wood here, um, Blutner's too, very nice and light to pull in and out. Um, and it has a rocker system which you get on old Beckstein's. Uh, Blutner's have a patent action, so that's a bit different. Uh, let's have a look at the, the shanks. And we notice that the shank has got this hole here for the, the check or catcher to catch them like this and it doesn't seem to work extremely well at the moment. I think I've seen a French make similar to this. I don't know if it's Playel. Uh, we've worked on one and I just can't remember which one it was but uh, similar to this anyway and you can see it checks and in this case if, as I release it it is going upwards so the spring in fact the, the, the levers look quite similar to modern levers really not that much different so um, that hasn't changed an awful lot since, the 18, since 1870 or so um, but the design as I say this design here is different and I, I think it tends to wear a bit more than what you normally have as a check behind and if you look at the back of this hammer it's flat there's no check obviously it doesn't need one and they're recovered hammers if you look carefully you can see uh, that they're not replaced but recovered as you'd expect with this style of action so I can't seem to focus enough but you can see that where, where the, a knife's been on it and it's not quite as exact fit and on the front it's more difficult to detect because it's got that extra piece of, of um, felt or base felt here to for the check you can see here that the, it's not been very worn at all since since those felts were put on so that's very encouraging it does need a bit of voicing but uh, the hammers are, are good right through to the top so whoever did the work has done a good job I did find a serial number on the piano 2905 which was also underneath the cheeks so I don't really know how that relates to anything couldn't find a list of serial numbers for Hagspiel so if you are familiar that would be really wonderful to hear about it. Uh, looking inside at the dampers uh, you can see that there's been some corrosion on the leads here and it's caused a split on this one here. Um, generally we do find they're beginning to split when they're corroded so that could do with some work I think can change the, uh, the, the leads we can have to make a decision on that so the good news is it's it's got real screws at the back what I mean is very often it's vellum hinges on Blutner's vellum hinges um, which is usually fine but they can break and you have to be very careful when you put the action back in because you can break the vellum hinge at the end at the back uh, and this is an interesting system too very simple so it obviously works well the dampers are needing regulating but they're they're pretty well regulated considering the front well pulls downwards and recently I did an assessment on a, a, a Blutner similar age and mentioned that these were missing so just wanted to show you uh, you can find that other video on our website and on YouTube channel as well uh, but this this cleat it should be on the Blutners as well and obviously similar style to the Blutner
So this front rail pushes downwards instead of pulling upwards, same as the boot now. So I've mentioned most of the things on this assessment sheet. Um, we can see, as I say, confusion about the date, 1870, 1875. It's got a full iron frame, so I think that suggests to me it should be post-1870, but please comment if you know it more than I do. It was founded in 1862, apparently. I did a bit of research. And up to a thousand a year that's of serial numbers probably moving yearly by a thousand so there might not be anything near that number um, and uh, full iron frame flat dampers the check wire through the flanges sorry i mean through the uh, the shanks don't i i have to correct that and original strings possibly recovered hammers so looking at it the the, the key dip and the hammer blow hammer blows are great that certainly could take take the hammer blow up a bit and uh, that would probably be better but regulation I wasn't looking at too much because there's so much to do on restringing definitely um, and it's got small tuning pins so it will, it will restring and larger pins can be put in without any problem and make them tight so you can much woodworm so that's a major factor on this piano um, so it's definitely worth working on value of the piano afterwards it's very attractive so it's very hard to tell um, can we get this touch right because if you can see there 54 in the base is about right but 46 46 43 42 37 where it should be 50 so for practicing that wouldn't be a good idea if you want a light touch then obviously you could leave it like that but for practicing you want 50 really and this could be it's a, it's a good design of action so it could be a practice piano if you would like to keep the piano and play seriously on it if it was restrung but it's a lot of work to do so i hope that's helpful i'm just going to play the piano to give some idea of the sound of it although it's well out of tune sorry i mean way way out of tune i should say um so sorry about that so that's a hagspiel grand piano 180 centimeters long made in about 1870 i think and i don't think it's been tuned for a very very long time but it has a richness right throughout the whole of the piano a warmth of sound if you're familiar with this age of hagspiel and have worked on one before it'd be wonderful to hear from you it shows every signs of being able to be restored well, but it does need restringing, and there's a lot of problem with woodworm, which obviously is uh, really important to deal with. But I think we can make it into a, a beautiful instrument. Whether we can get the touch so that it can be used as a practice piano is partly dependent on how much space there is and for weights at the back of the keys, or whether we need to change the hammers to get the, the weight um, to, to what it should be because it's very very light at the moment this age of piano it was lighter in those days and if you happen to know what sort of weight you'd expect on a piano of 1875-ish then uh, please do make a comment well it's so out of tune that you may not like to listen to this so but the underlying tone if I play loud here it's how i normally check a piano and does it sort of seem that the sound carries across the soundboard and it does <laughs> well that's <laughs> i'm sorry uh, i won't play anymore i hope that's been helpful perhaps we should just play a bass Thank you very much for listening.